Okay, so we're recording now. Thanks everybody for joining us for our second panel for um, the proteges and pelican relationship. Um, we had a few questions that we didn't get to last time. So uh, we'll start going through those. If anybody has any kind of follow-up questions or you know just wants to throw something out there in addition to that, let me know. Um, if you want to, you know, say something, you can uh, unmute yourself. If we have a bunch of us uh, that are trying to go at the same time, maybe just raise your hand or use the raise hand feature and then I can tell you, you know, who's next. Okay, so the first question, um, and this was actually something that someone uh, presented last time um, that they sent in that we didn't get to is what is something you wish you had known before approaching this path? Okay, um, so <laughs> I actually, uh, I'm a protege and uh, I actually spent a lot of time talking to friends of mine who are protégés and who are apprentices um, about what it was like for them with the understanding that every relationship is different. So um, I actually had a ton of questions and my pelicans are amazing. They sat down with me and they took a couple of hours one night and we went through all of my questions and everything <laughs> and we worked out you know exactly what I expect of them what do they expect of me and it was really really good and because we've been super honest and super open about everything from the get-go I haven't had anything come up that was like oh man I wish I knew that um, other than I, I tease my pelicans about um, having adopted me into this family that nobody knows how large it is because I'll travel to the northern part of the kingdom and someone would be like oh hey you're the one that Melodia and Ua took right and I'm like yeah who are you and they're like welcome to the family and I'm like uh who are you <laughs> so, and Grania, other you're than from, that, there's... what kingdom are you from Grania? I'm Outlands. Outlands thank you I remember that you're not on Sarah but I couldn't remember what kingdom yeah so i think because they let me work through everything before we made anything official and i was the one who insisted on a trial period they were both kind of like eh, okay if you really want <laughs> um, but because we did that and they they let me talk through things um I haven't had any surprises, real surprises. So if anybody is looking to become a protege or I would say apprentice, but not this panel, um, think about it. Think about all your questions and really, really talk to them. And you're not gonna wind up with a lot of surprises if you really think about things. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Okay, um, Alden has his hand raised. Yeah, now that I've uh, had a mouthful of food here. Sorry. <laughs> um, Not really. <laughs> so, um, something I, I wish I had known um, or maybe have thought to have asked. Not that I would change anything in the relationship I had with my pelican, but um, not long after I protégéed, uh, my pelican was Master Michael Silverhands. Um, and if you don't know who he is, that's because shortly after I protégéed, he kind of quit playing in the SCA. Um, so something I might have put more thought into asking is, hey, how committed are you to staying in the SCA, staying active, being engaged? Um, it, was, it was okay in the long run, looking back, and, and why I wouldn't change anything. Um, is because I did still have a very good relationship with Michael. Um, we were we we're very we're friends, we're brothers outside of the SCA, uh, as much as we are in. Um, and I know he still kept an eye on me, even while he was off doing other things, getting married, having a family, and and I, I certainly don't fault him for wanting to do all that. Um, 
And but I was also close to um, Godwin and Lissa in Stargate, who were both Pelicans. Um, I was squired eventually squired to Godwin, uh, so they were both vested in my my service path as well. Uh, so it's not like I didn't have somebody there, but I think it's definitely something to consider when you're talking with a prospective Pelican or a protege of you know what are what are you looking at realistically for your longevity in the society and playing this game. Um, you know, one of the things I was very excited about in becoming a Pelican was being able to take protégés and play the game from that side of the coin um, and, you know, stay involved and stay active and in part play for them and enjoy their journeys and, and continue to be there for them. And I think having had a Pelican who kind of disappeared on me in the game further inspires me to stay active and stay engaged for my protégés. Definitely. I think that's uh, a good advice for sure. I had that happen not on my um, Pelican path, but on my uh, apprentice and Laurel path where my first Laurel disappeared. And then so when before I went with the second one, I was like, okay, are you planning on sticking around? Because I don't want to have to do this again. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that my Laurel decided to wait to resign her Laurel until after I was Laurel. So I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, so I kind of skipped a important step. Um, and I was just thinking, oh, well, we've all been here before, but we probably haven't all been here before. So uh, we should go around the room real quick and just do quick introductions. Um, so I'll start and then I'm just going to go in the order that you guys are appearing on my screen because, heck, that's easy. Um, I'm Katerina Giovanni. Um, I am a protege to uh, Duchess of Vanessa, and I am in the Kingdom of Onstiora, Barony of Damron. Uh, Kel, you want to go next? Um, I am Honorable Lady Kalina. I am in Onstiora. I am Seneschal of Rosenfeld, and I currently have uh, two pelicans that are working together because one is uh, busy moving and the other one is uh, still able to be active. So there you have it. I do <laughs> equestrian. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I cannot say your name. C-A-I-T-I-I-N. <laughs> You're muted. You're muted. Hello. Okay. Sorry. It's How do you Colleen. pronounce Colleen? It's okay. Gotcha. Kathleen. It's like hard Kathleen. Gotcha. Okay. So it's Kathleen Ian Ronaney Kaylee. Cat for short. I like cat. But <laughs> I'm a. Yeah. That's why I get confused when they say cat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a Herald. I am currently Treasure Herald for the College of Herald. I'm from Stargate. And I'm not a protege or a pelican. I'm here because I'm wanting to learn about it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lillis? I am Honorable Lady Lillis McGuffin. I also reside here in Onsteora. Um, I'm currently the Northern Regional Chronicler. I am a herald and a scribe, and I currently do not have a belt from anybody. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Magdalena. Her Excellency Magdalena Cortez, also known as Dina, here in Onstiora. I am belted to Mistress Mafangwe. Uh, I also claim Master Pug as my other one, even though it's no, there's nothing official, but he's totally mine. I don't care. Um, I am currently the Southern Regional Treasurer. Uh, I have been the Marshallette Secretary. I have been the local treasurer. I have been head of entourage. I have been entourage. I have done all kinds of things. Oh my dear God, it's make me stop. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, I've just been having a blast with all of it. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Mafanway. Um, I live in the Barony of Bringlewood in Aunt Stiora. My service is primarily administrative. I do a lot of 
how to make things look nicer. So if people are having problems because an office is being a little cranky, frequently I will take that office over and make it friendlier. Uh, my belief is communication, communication, and then some more communication to make it so that it's all up front. Um, I currently hold the office of officer application coordinator because I looked at the kingdom and went, hmm, this is a problem. We're not getting enough officers apply, not enough people. I have a long way to go, but that's what I do. Awesome. Thank you. Valeria. I am Honorable Lady Valeria. I am in Anstora. I live in Stargate and I'm Alden. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I'm currently, um, I am currently a, a Herald right now. I am Actuarius Herald. I am Deputy Kotlin and I'm in charge of education. I've been Arbalist Herald. I've been a lady in waiting to Her Excellency Nessa. Uh, dear God, if I don't hold, stop holding my hand up and saying, yes, I'll do that. Or Paul go, hey, take a walk with me. Try this thing. I don't know if I can ever stop. So, and so. I'm Paul's protege. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Grania? Okay, um, I'm Grania Oker. I am from the Kingdom of the Outlands. I live in the Barony of Alberon. Um, I am a herald. I am currently a jobless herald. Um, that doesn't stop me from doing tons and tons of heraldic things. Um, I was the Scorpion Pursuivant. Um, I stepped down in November. I am also on the board of the Outlands Inner Kingdom University and doing stuff like that. And I am belted to both Master Ua and Mistress Melodia. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Alden? This time without food in my mouth. <laughs> um, my name's Alden Drake. Um, I'm both a pelican and a laurel in Onsteora. Um, living in the barony of Stargate. Uh, currently have three protégés, one of which is here with us, Valeria. Um, currently, I am, I am not holding any job whatsoever. Um, but still, you know, keeping tabs on the College of Heralds. I'm a former Star Principal Herald for Anstiora, uh, and I've held, gosh, most of the Kingdom Heraldic Offices local, regional, uh, I was actuarius as well, um, Bourgeois, uh, Sable Rondell, uh, if, it's, if it's heraldry, I, I'm in. Um, I've been studying heraldry since I was seven, so that makes it 40 years now. Uh, I'm also actively involved in the Bardic community in Osteora, uh, former premier bard of the kingdom um, and champion of, of Bardic arts. Um, I also get very involved in <clears throat> uh, autocratic events, um, and I've done, even done a few fee stewardings, um, putting my, my project management skills uh, mundanely uh, to good effect, both as autocrat and uh, feastocrat, and I've also been the local and regional seneschal uh, of what was once the coastal region. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and like I said, mundanely, I'm a, a certified project management professional um, so I, I try to volunteer whatever project management services I can to the SCA as well, because uh, that gives me development credits towards my certification. We'll have to talk about that offline sometime, because that's what I do for a living, too. I'm a project oh, okay. manager, and I didn't know that I could use that for credit. I've got a lot that I've mm -hmm. done, so. <laughs> I'll have to... Volunteering project management services to a 501c3 or whatever it is. Uh-huh. You can get points for that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely have to talk about that later. Um, <laughs> Jenny, you're next. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm Johanna Jacobs daughter. Currently, uh, I am the um, hospitaler of Barony of the Steps. I am a former MOAS of the Steps. Um, I'm a protege, but I'm kind of conflicted on what to do right this moment. Um, so that's where I am. I'm kind of lost. Aww. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're here with us and maybe some of our discussions will help. <laughs> well, I hope so, but I mean, it's, it's, 
it's a big problem as you know most of you probably know who my pelican is oh gotcha gotcha okay ivo your turn all right, I am His Lordship Ivo Blackhawk of North of Anstiora. I'm a 22-year member. My strongest suit is voice heraldry and, and advocating for the voice heraldic arts. Um, within the SCA, I've, for various reasons, tackled the titles of project manager, special deputy to star principal herald. Um, I was in the past a protege, uh, and then that ended, and... I was later approached by a pelican from outside the kingdom, so I'm currently protege to Master Alexander Ravenscroft of the Kingdom of Meridies. Um, and when we're done with introductions, I did have an answer to your first question. I was just hesitant awesome. on continuing with that. So that's all my intro. Sure, no problem. And yeah, we'll definitely go back to that question when we get done. Uh, Adam. I'm Aiden McRae in the uh, society. Uh, I have been uh, the Seneschal of Rosenfeld, the web minister of Rosenfeld, the treasurer of Mo Rosenfeld multiple times. I am currently the treasurer of Rosenfeld. I am also the deputy uh, to Kel for uh, Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Thank you. <laughs> My words are losing. <laughs> so, um, uh, and Rhiannon Fairchain is my pelican. Uh, she has not uh, belted me, but she told me I can wear a belt to get noticed. Sounds good. Thanks. Uh, Your Excellencies, Gavin and Wynn Tiliana. Hello. Hello. I can go first. Uh, greetings. I am Baron Gavin. We are the landed nobility for the Barony of Ringwald. Um, I have been actively playing in the SCA for 29 years now. Uh, next year will be my 30th anniversary. I have been doing service that entire time. I don't even want to go into the list. I will use all my our meeting time if I even started. Resumes are available upon request. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gavin. <laughs> With no problem. Gavin. Currently yeah, I'm currently unbelted, so uh, my, my pelican um, had to step out due to health issues, and so she uh, released all of her protégés, so. Gotcha. Um, her Excellency Wintiliana, uh, I am protégé to Mr. Sharla, and yeah, I've, I'm a baby. I've only been playing for, it's like about coming up nine years right now, <laughs> um, but so I've held I've been the local uh, local target archery marshal. I've done deputy seneschal, and then of course now landed. Um, I am stepping up here soon under <laughs> Her Excellency Cat. I will be the deputy kingdom target archery marshal. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Winter Liana. Uh, Cynthia. Hello. Uh, so I don't quite know how to change my name, but I'm actually Lady Nicolette Deloria. Um, I've been doing this for 26 and a half ish years. Um, I've done pretty, I've lived in three different kingdoms. I'm currently in Onstiora and everywhere I go, I help out wherever is needed. And, oh. and I am unbelted. Great, thank you. Um, if you go to where your uh, little, it says mute, and then it has like three little dots next to it. Uh, you can click on that and click on rename and change your name there. So <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there in case you want to. Um, but thank you for sharing. Uh, Finna, not sure if I said that right or not. Yeah, that's right. Um, hi, I'm uh, Baroness Finna Cotier. I am Cotier. I am the landed Baroness of Rivenoak in the West Kingdom. Um, I'm protege to Mistress uh, Catherine Devere. And I'm apprenticed to Mistress Hilary the Puppeteer and Sir Bjorn of Bearhaven. I've been a herald. I'm a currently a scribe. I'm a current the West Kingdom uh, Youth Marshal. And my favorite thing is to be an event steward. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing and for joining us today. Uh, ah, it's 
K-A-T-E-Y-N. I don't know how to say that one either. I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, Katerin List. Uh, there you I go. reside in Anstura in the barony of Jornsburg. So I actually joined last year, so I'm still relatively new, but uh, I'm jumping into a bunch of different services. So I'm not belted, I'm not Braje. I'd like to eventually become a Pelican, so that's kind of why I'm here today. But I've done like gates and fee serving, and I'm helping uh, advertise our upcoming event for Valkerfeld. So I wanted to jump in and see kind of how to become a Braje. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm glad you could join us. Um, and Jane. Uh, my name is Lady Jane Cobb, and I am protege to Mr. Serafina Meslowska. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we all can kind of know a little bit more about each other, so that's good. Thanks for taking the time out to do that. And Ivo, we can go back to your comment if you're ready about what is something that you wish you had known about approaching this path before you took it? Um. I want to preface this by saying that I was a largely known quantity when I first spoke with uh, Master Roberts Morgan about becoming a uh, protege. And when my current Pelican approached me, we'd been working together online and most heavily at Gulf Wars for almost five years. So I was a fairly known quantity with him. Um, I wish that someone had explained to me before I took a belt with Robert how blood curdlingly political the role can become. Um, I'm not saying it would have changed any of the end results, but there were certainly some conversations which probably would have been less painful for all involved if I were better, if I were better prepared for how that was going to go down. Makes sense. Yep. Thank you for sharing. Mafanwe? So I actually want to go off of what I was just talking about. Um, that was what I was going to say is I wish that somebody had explained to me, maybe not before I took a belt, because by the time I took a belt, I recognized that the politics were part of the reason why I had to take a belt, but explaining that to get on this path, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about the Pelican or you're talking about the Apprentice or you're talking about the Knighthood. You know, the squad, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter which path you're taking. There is going to be a lot of politics. I feel that the Pelican probably has more politics than the others do, only by the sake of part of what you're doing is organized. It's politics. It's all about how you nicely ask somebody. It's all about how you approach the problem. It's all about that in personal interaction, which is politics. And so I, I, I wish I had gotten to that realization a little bit earlier on my path than I had. Um, and so that's something I just wanted to go off of what he was saying. Yep, definitely makes sense. Uh, Adam? Yeah, I was wanting to say that uh, the political thing is one thing that I really wish I knew about because that has really kind of uh, put a dampener on my whole uh, insight on this because I'm there for service. I'm there to help everybody. I'm not there to play a political game. And I got my AOA by doing service on my very first event over in Dragon Ball. <laughs> and so my very first event, the next event, I got my AOA. So it was kind of, hey, doing service, you get rewarded. But then all the service I was, I've been doing so far, it seems like it's just straight politics now. But that's yeah. what I have to say. I, I understand. It does get to be more and more. Um, Mafanwe and then Valeria. I'll let Valeria go first because she hasn't talked yet. Okay. <laughs> um, just to... Uh piggyback on what was said when I was given my um, when I was given my belt or when Paul and I did a did our um, protege pelican thing somebody took me aside and said are you ready for this fishbowl I just want to ask you if you're ready for this fishbowl whispered in my ear and I was like uh yeah and I originally came from the West Kingdom and I was in a household there and our whole household was service but it was service 
but you never were supposed to get credit for the service that you did. You just did service because it came from your heart. And then later on, after this happened, my, uh, my household leader, who I'm still part of this household, never goes away. It's in the West Kingdom, but we talk all the time. And he's like, so you've got this belt now. I'm like, uh, he goes, they finally got you, huh? He's like, yeah. He goes, aren't you, weren't you supposed to run? I said, yeah, no, couldn't do it. <laughs> but it's that whole thing. And you have to be that political person. You have to, I mean, because they don't look at just what you do one thing. It's every single step you take privately, publicly, everything. It's all what you do. So, you know, you got to just keep on your toes. So I've learned this new thing that I've been doing is like, when I do go to an event, I will talk to Pelicans now. When somebody said, oh, did your Pel tell you to do this? I'm, no, this is what you do is you talk and this is how you learn. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great mm -hmm. advice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mifonwe? So kind of to add to that, Adam, I just kind of wanted to approach that. Politics have two different ways of dealing with it. There's politics of trying to move it the way And then there's the politics of trying to make something get accomplished. So I look at, I look at one way of being kind of the dirty politics. And that's never what we want to do. We never want to do that. Despite everybody else, I want it to go this way. You always want to do the, we're working towards a common goal. And so you always have politics. With an interaction in a household, you're having, in a family of two, you're having politics. Okay, we're going to have this tonight for dinner so that we can have this tonight, tomorrow for my, that I want for dinner. Whatever it is, you always have that agreement. That's politics. It's when you're trying to make it see it as being the right way. Gotcha. Yep, I think that makes sense. Kel? Listening to all of them, I think had I had an opportunity to have been out within the kingdom on a more open basis than being sequestered in the area, which I love and whatnot as equestrian, um, I came to the game because I was protege very early, but I was, I, I was late to the game of about courtly conduct and um, how to approach people and retired military. Sometimes that gets in the way. Um, I wish when I had that opportunity to take, when I took the belt that I had had more of an opportunity to be involved in the bigger picture of the SCA than just around the horses and occasionally at court when, you know, we were needed. Um, it wasn't until much later that I really um, was able to go that route. And it was very eye-opening, um, frustrating, heartbreaking, and uh, wonderful all in one swoop because I've learned a lot. But I think if I could have known more about having to interact on a larger scale, it would have helped my path um, sooner than mm -hmm. later. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm kind of tongue-tied in trying to be politically yeah. correct on how I say things. No, I, I totally understand what you're saying, and I think a lot of us fall into that. Um, category and it takes a while to get all of that figured out. Uh, Magdalena? Speaking to Adam's frustrations, I completely understand where he's coming from because just a couple of years ago, Mafumwe and I were having this exact conversation. It's like, oh my God, the politics. Oh my God, the politics. You got to say something just right. You are so and so is going to get upset and then you got to do it. And if anybody who knows me knows that, I, I'm going to tell you like it is. And if you don't like it, sorry. Not really, but in that couple of years, I've also realized a couple of things. Um, just because it's the truth doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be spoken. And if it does need to be spoken, doesn't mean it needs to be the most bluntest way possible, which I'm very guilty of and I'm working on that. <laughs> um, at the same time, politics for me, I, I, I've come to realize 
the politics of the game is kind of like the whetstone to the knife. We want to be peers, not of on We want to be peers of the society. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to be put in a situation by our crown at Penzik, at Gulf Wars, at insert major event here, and they know without a single doubt that we're going to be able to face that fire, make on strong and proud, and not cause an international incident at the same time. And so, yeah, politics suck. But if you look at it more as this is honing my skills versus this is holding me back, it changes the perspective. And like I said, I went just two years ago, I was there, but change the perspective. It's, it's not an obstacle. It's a challenge. It's meant for you to overcome it, figure out how to overcome it and you'll continue to grow. Yep. I, I agree with that. I had a very similar situation. Two things happened with me. One, I was, you know, as a project manager, I deal with a lot of um, very tense situations at work. And so luckily I have a lot of skills from that that I can apply to the SCA. So I've started using my politically correct hat and uh, skills for that. And then also we had the opportunity while we were landed to see, you know, firsthand how you have to have that, I, I look at it as empathy, put yourself in their shoes and, you know, yeah, they may be throwing a big old hissy fit and acting ridiculous. Um, and you know that on the inside, right? But you can't react the same way they're reacting or it's just going to escalate. You have to keep your calm. You have to be empathetic, look at it from their point of view and then try to resolve the situation. Right. Uh, Valeria, did you have something else to add? Yeah, I was just going to add really quick. I mean, I've learned my lesson that before I open my mouth, I will take Paul aside and go, I uh, take all the side and say, okay, I'm going to say this, but you need to back me up if I'm going to say this, because if I'm going to get in trouble, I need for you to know ahead of time. And it's actually helped a few times just to make sure that he has my back in a situation, because if somebody comes back and says, well, Valeria did blah, 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 he can say, yeah, I know. Yeah. And I support her on that. Um, or he'll say, no, don't do that. That would be bad. No, but at least he's, it's been the best advice. Yeah, I was going to say it. It also gives me an opportunity to discuss with her if I think there's a better approach, you know, <laughs> a, gent a gentler <laughs> approach. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. another good piece of advice is don't surprise your pelican with stuff. <laughs> Ironically <laughs> enough, Mafamwe and I, I just dropped a huge text message on Mafamwe. What was it, a week ago or so ago? And I'm like, I'm about to post this. Speak now forever. Hold your peace. And she's mm -hmm. like, nope, you're good. <laughs> yeah. and, and when when we agree, I absolutely have my protégés back. Absolutely. absolutely. And there are some causes that blunt is a lot more um, effective than <laughs> gentle and kind. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely true in those situations, but at least I know that we have such a great relationship that I can come to him with pretty much, hey, I've got this great idea. And he'd be like, no, 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 back, 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 take it slow. <laughs> yep, definitely. Um, okay, so um, yeah. oh, go ahead. Sorry. The other cat was raising her hand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Having been a baronial herald twice for Stargate, I found out what the other side of the thrones was and the politics, and you go, oh, okay. We just have to step aside for that for a minute because I've been around several crowns now, and each of them are different, and their, their heralds are different. So you just have to work it out and deal with the politics. Because I work in libraries and I've seen politics in libraries. So you just work it out and just keep making your path as straight as possible without trying to get into all that fire. Because if you, could, if you get into that fire, it's going to burn you out. And it's just best to just be calm, let them do their thing and go on. True story, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, 
So moving on to another question, and this is actually um, one that was uh, brought up last time that we didn't get to. And it's also something that a couple people have messaged me about after hearing uh, Ivo say that his peer is out of the kingdom. So uh, what are common challenges faced in a protege pelican relationship when you live in two different kingdoms and how can that be overcome? Uh, Alden? <clears throat> so my Laurel uh, was out of kingdom and um, you know, it, it's, she, uh, she, she lived maybe 10, 15 minutes away from me when she lived in Osteora last. Um, and she, she was not a Laurel at the time, but she was my teacher. Um, and we had, you know, easy access, great communication. We could meet for lunch. Um, but then she, she left Kingdom, she moved up to Toronto, uh, and she was recognized as a Laurel in uh, Eldemir. Uh, that was three years after I became her student. Um, so the bulk of the time that we set up that relationship before I became her official apprentice was long distance and remote. Um, and it was at a difficult time in her life. She had just gotten divorced and was restarting a new life um, and going through a lot. But that relationship meant enough to me to really drive holding on to that connection, making sure if, you know, Facebook was pretty new still at the time. Um, and that was an invaluable resource just to stay connected and, drop messages, let her know what I was doing, ask for help. Um, I'll always kind of, you know, get some uh, help or ask questions of your peers, something to keep them engaged with you. Um, I think is a great idea. Have them give you little projects to work on um, to help you develop skills you need for the things you're doing. Um, if you have never autocratted an event, um, you know, ask your pelican, hey, what can I do to be better prepared to be an autocrat? You know, and he, they might say, well, why don't you be a coordinator for an activity and event and do a couple little things that are under the purview of an autocrat when you get there. Um, so you kind of get little homework assignments. And I think that's a, a really good strategy, but it, it boils down to communication and determination to maintain the contact. Definitely. Yeah, I can see that. Anybody else have thoughts that they want to add? Iva? Um, the, uh, I, just from a purely logistical standpoint, I know with Alexander and I, the major benefits of the relationship are that because he's removed from my kingdom and I'm removed from his or the five kingdoms he routinely travels in, um, we really have a very sterile approach to looking at each other's situations. He's not steeped in, in Ansteor and politics and history, and I'm not steeped in Meridian politics and history, which, which really does lift a set of blinders off. I can, I can say something to him and he'll say, Oh, I hadn't thought of that. And he could say something to me and I'm like, we don't think that way here. And he goes, well, maybe you need to start I'm like, well, okay, that's fair. Um, <clears throat> Though all of that being said, it is also understood that there is zero opportunity for him to advocate for me in a circle. That has to be done through some sort of a proxy. Um, and I mean, this was a known quantity when we spoke originally, so that's not that's not a knock on the relationship. But you, you want to know what the drawback is, is you don't have someone in the circle, A, telling them your story, or B, telling you what type of feedback is needed. So it's wins and losses. So do you have other uh, Pelican advocates here? No, not currently. No? Okay. I was just curious. Not currently. I, one of the reasons, and he said this in front of an audience, so I have no trouble repeating this. When he approached me, the first words out of his mouth were, um, I have seen that Aunt Stewart is not willing to do something and I'm going to rectify it. Would you consider being a protege? Um, we both have some pretty strong opinions about the way things are done and the way that's affected me. Um, 
not necessarily on a critical standpoint, but it's when we talk, we definitely have some opinions about some stuff that's been overlooked. My, you know, when I was calling for help, other kingdoms sent protégés and pelicans. Anstior didn't send anyone at golf. So that left its mark. And that's that, that type of dynamic is part of what shaped um, how he and I worked together. One very small part, but a telling part. Gotcha. I will, I will add that Ivo and I also talk a lot and I do know his pelican. Um, and while Ivo might not have a named advocate in Onstiora, he definitely has people that are, are keeping tabs on him and mm. keeping an eye out. And, and occasionally I aming me and going, do us both a favor and shut up for 24 hours. <laughs> That's legit. It happens. Yeah. So one of the things that I learned, and this is not, um, this is something I use with Dina, um, but it's something that is beneficial for, I think, all students. It doesn't matter if you're in Kingdom, out of Kingdom, but I actually learned it from an, a pelican who was a friend of one of her, you know, and I was friends with her protege, but I also knew the pelican. And so one of the things she started doing is she started having her students yearly. Uh-oh, Mafanwe, you're frozen. So that's a document that I think is beneficial for all of us to have. And if you're on any kind of path, it helps it so that if you want a surprise, you can have a surprise. If they want to do it on the spot, it could be done on the spot because your peer could pull up and go, yep, all these people are here. Let's do it. And it, it's one of those we've taught. Uh, they talk about it as the what is your what is your elevation look like, you know, thing. It's those kinds of things. It's having that elevation plan. So not everybody ever wants you to have this whole if I get it, I want this and this. But you also need to recognize when you get to a certain point, this is likely if. Her okay, so who, who do you want as your peer? What would you see as your elevation? How would this, it, it won't be suddenly, okay, so let's talk about your elevation when she's closer to that time and she's going to be made. It's not, it, it's been a conversation we have every year. So I recommend that as a, you know, even if you're in Kingdom, you should have that, but especially if you're out of Kingdom, having that document available to your peer of these are the people that are important to me, that they are there if I am to be elevated. These are the people I want to have sp speak for me in these places. And this is our traditions of my kingdom. All of Continue to have that station, especially if you're not in Kingdom with each other. Yep, that absolutely makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Magdalena? When Mafamwe first brought this to me, I was just kind of like, isn't that the exact opposite of what we're being told? You know, we don't want to be a pelican. We don't want to do these things. Um, and it took me a little bit to kind of warm up to the idea of like, probably like, I had to sit with it for a couple of weeks before I actually started doing it. And now I'm a big advocate of it. And one thing I do want to kind of get out there to the other protégés who, if they want to bring this on, approach it as a living document. Um, the people that I have on my list today we're not all the people that were on my list two years ago, or some of them are, some of them aren't. Some of them have, have changed roles. You know, there have been people that I would have never thought would be on my list that now are. Um, and so I, I do think it's a very handy tool if for no other reason is making sure you're looking outside of just your, your friends. You know, who has been elevated recently that inspired you? Could, they, could, could that be somebody that you could now go to and learn from and glean advice from? I very much treat mine like a living document. And I encourage anybody who has any questions or, or anything to come talk to me or talk to their peer. I find it immensely useful. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Valeria? Mafan, like, can you go back? You cut out in the middle of what the document was, and so I didn't get to hear it. So the document that I have is who do you want to speak for you and who is important for you to have at that elevation? Um, those are the important things, right? It, then you can add things like what do you want it to look like? How you know, I want it to be a Spanish theme, I want it to be a Viking theme, I want it to, you know, I want to have it at war because I have a lot. 
baronial group because my barony is not important to me, what, whatever those things. Um, and one of the other things that, I mean, I keep, a, I keep a document for if I ever become a Laurel, okay? I, Pug has a document for if he ever becomes a mod or a knight. You know, we, we keep these documents even as peers because it helps us look at it, helps us grow. These are things, as a peer, you have to learn to judge people. So that includes who do you want to speak for you? Because that is something you have to figure out. Where do I, what's important to me on this path? And they may not be, like, if you're on the pelican and laurel and night path, who you want to have speak for you could be different people in those different paths. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, Alden? So following on to Fonwi's suggestion for having that uh, planned list, um, because at one point I was a squire apprentice protege, I, I had a list for all three at the same time. Because if I had these people speaking for me as, you know, a pelican for, for if I become a pelican, well, then the pelicans won't speak for me in that case. So I need to have a pelican to speak for me if I become a laurel knight or mod. I, I wasn't planning on mod because I don't fight rapier. But, um, and then I don't want to ask the same people to speak for me if I get elevated more than once. So, so who are my, you know, second peerage people that I want to talk to? And, uh, that's, and, and I've been elevated twice now, so I did have to rely on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you had it. Uh, yeah. Marguerite? I think what Marcella was talking about is we call it a portfolio. You wanted to know the name of the document. Um, it has a whole list of things that I have for my students. Um, they list what they do, where they do it, who they assist, what events they run. And inside of that, we have that talk with them. And I do yearly as well. well who do you want to speak for you? But, but the more common name is portfolio. Hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, let's move on to another question um, that was actually sent. Um, yeah. at, oh, sorry, Ivo did I miss somebody? Ivo. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry, go ahead, Ivo. Someone said something, and I wanted to just footnote this, and I think it was Magdalena who said it, that it's, it's hard making the transition from working for the sake of work to wanting to become a pelican. Um, I share that, that same dilemma, and I'll be honest with you. In terms of wanting to rank for myself, I still am very – frankly pessimistic of it. It's not, I ever want to be a Pelican. What helped me turn the corner was I realized how much influence Pelicans have in advocating for others. And I realized that part of the reason why, uh, well, long story short, there are people who I see who don't have advocates. And for a long list of reasons that need not be discussed here, they're probably not going to get any for a very, very long time, if ever. And what part of what convinced me to accept Ravenscroft proposal was the idea I can advocate for them. And that is the singular reason why I am agreeing to go down this path. Gotcha. That definitely makes sense. Uh, Adam. Okay. He started talking about advocates. So this might go off onto a different, question that you have uh so let me know if it does that's okay uh that is something that i have an issue with uh is having people see me doing for one because i'm not belted and she doesn't have a belt for me so i was doing everything without a belt and nobody knew i was belted or i had a, a pelican uh, but what can we do without trying to blow our own whistle saying, Hey, look what I did, because I think that's wrong going, Hey, look at me, look at me, <laughs> you know, I totally understand. I have what that problem can, too. Amen, people like us, what can we do? Marguerite, did you have a comment? I did. Um, having a belt is great having an advocate we as in the circle don't look just for those people who have belts i know that a lot of people think that it has to happen it doesn't um, 
my Lord in particular did not have a belt. Uh, and his job, what he did for getting that was not public. No one but a select maybe three or four people saw what he did, yet they still brought him before the circle. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, did you know that I did this? Can you give me some feedback? It's a good way of getting out there. Um, again, keep your own list so that if someone has a comment or wants to know some information, you don't have to have a representative to keep that list. So that say, hey, Adam's significant other, sorry, Adam, I don't know you that well, <laughs> says, hey, do you know if Adam has a list? And she says, sure, let me shoot that to you. Having it out there and ready is fabulous. But having an advocate is not something you have to do. It is a help. It is not a hindrance for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Magdalena. So to talk to Adam, uh, a question, you know, how, what do you do? The first part, I mean, this is a multi-part question and, or multi-part answer and parts of it you're probably not going to like and I apologize ahead of schedule. The first thing to know is at the end of the day, I don't care if you have one, two, three, four, five, twelve peers. At the end of the day, you are your advocate. You need to stand up for yourself. You know what you did. Your advocate only knows what you tell them that you did. So you first you need to start there. Second of all, you need to get over the P fear as far as politics. Because if you want to, if you want to further advance your, your agenda, if you want to further advance within this game, you're going to have to play politics. Even if that means, hey, look at me, I did X. Now, that doesn't mean go up and scream, scream it in someone's face, but you know, it, there, there's ways to be like, hey, do you need help with X, Y, and Z? Because you know, I've done blah, 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 blah. That's a very easy way to give your resume. And then like, kind of like Marguerite said, keep a resume of everything you've ever done. I have literally documented every single job I've ever done. Again, nobody else can do that but you. My family is not going to remember every single job I've ever done. Only I can do that. Only I can make sure she has access to that information. At the end of the day, if you want to further your path, you are your number one advocate. You need to get the information out there, whether that's talking to your significant other, whether that's talking to your not peer or peer, whether that's talking to your friends who happen to be in high places at the time. But all of that requires politicking so you can't have one without the other that's kind of my takeaway from all the in the in the, the i don't even want to think about how many years i've been playing this game that is true and i do i recommend everybody have a resume i have one and my friends that are pelicans will be like hey do you have your resume is it updated send it to me so that'll happen uh yes alden uh yeah i i I can't agree, and I've been, you know, trying to browbeat my proteges to get me their resumes, uh, because it, it's no secret. <laughs> it, is, it is no secret that in the Pelican Circle, nine ninety nine times out of a hundred, when somebody's name is mentioned, do they have a resume? Can we see their resume? Pelicans love an SCA resume, probably I'll more than Laurel. <laughs> but laurels do too, but laurels want to see their brag book. We want to see what their arts are and what they have compiled for documentation and displays and everything. Um, so yeah, I, I keep nudging my, my protégés to, to get their uh, resumes to me. Um, but I just want to touch on, on something else too. Um, the belt, um, you know, we, we, we as a society have a tool uh, that is a student belt, whether you're a squire, a protege, an apprentice, or uh, a provost to a mod, um, they wear their belt around their neck, right? Um, my students, my pro I only have proteges, I don't have an apprentice yet. Um, they do not wear a belt. Uh, I have given each of them my badge, uh, and Val's holding up the, the protege badge that I made for her. Um, and I change the stone in the center 
it's yellow for my my protégés. It will be green for my apprentices. And if I can ever have squires, I'll put a red stone in the center for them. Um, when I was a protégé, I did not wear a belt. Uh, I wear a squire's belt because knights wear belts. There was a connection there to me that was logical. Um, and I didn't want to wear a protege belt or an apprentice belt so much because I didn't want somebody to say, hey, who's that protege doing that thing? I want them to say, oh, hey, that's Alden. He's doing something. Maybe I can help him out. Or maybe I should you know, tell his pelican that, hey, he did the thing. He did a good job. Um, I think more than the belt, it comes down to communication. Um, protégés, you know, should go out and talk to other pelicans and other peers uh, to learn from them and to say, yeah, I'm, I'm protégé to Master Alden. And, you know, he uh, suggested I talk to you about this thing. And, um, communicate with those people. Build those relationships directly with them. Don't let them rely on seeing you wearing a belt saying, oh, maybe I should go talk to that protégé, see what they're doing. I don't know who that protege is. Let me go find out or make it more personal than that. Um, it is my recommendation. You can certainly do it with a belt too. Um, and, and I did, I offered my protege. I said, this is my thinking. If you still want a belt, you're welcome to wear a belt, but I'm giving you a badge. Yep. Makes sense. Real quick to the protégés listening now and, to, and in the future regarding resumes, hashtag sorry, not sorry. No, it's true. <laughs> you need one. <laughs> no, right. I need to get one. But to back what Paul says, it's kind of neat to be able to go and talk to other pelicans and they don't know. It's almost like a stealth approach because you can just sit and learn this great bit of knowledge and then later on they'll look down and they go, oh, what's that? And I'll, oh, that's my protege pen for Master Alden. <laughs> That's cool. It's so, also a great uh, tactic for, for pelicans to get interested in somebody. Oh, Val's really cool. She's doing all kinds of stuff. I wonder if I could get her to be my protege. Oh, she's already Alden's. Dang, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually want to say two things. First off, as a pelican, I don't look to see if somebody has a protege belt or not a protege belt or anything like that. If they're doing a good If they're doing a good job and they don't um and they and I think that is even above and beyond. I'll go to the circle and say, "Hey, is this person anybody's student? I would like to talk about this person." I, I don't look to see if there's a belt or not a belt. I, you know, I'll be honest. I I I don't notice. I wore a belt as a protege. I was protege to a knight. That that's why I wore a belt. The knight expected me to. That's going to be the way it was. So that was first thing. Second thing, as far as SCA resumes, I would like to point out that when you write an SCA resume for a list of what you've done, give me a list of what you've done and what you learned, or give me a list of which projects you are really proud of and why you are proud of that. It gives me a lot more information than reading your Central Regional Seneschal, your Northern Herald, you were this and that. Okay, that's nice. You did a lot of offices. What did you do with those offices? So for me, if I see a list that says, I was uh, Southern Regional Treasurer and I took a group that was not reporting and I talked with them and I helped them through the reporting and I took a group that didn't understand the reports. This is awesome. That's something I really learn about as a Pelican. So please, when you write those resumes, give me more than just that office. Give me what was exciting to you about that office. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. Uh, Marguerite, did you have something? I did. Thank you. Um, I want to touch a base. We talked about it a little bit earlier, and Kay Kaylin asked about it again or, or spoke about it. There is no shame in wanting to be a peer none at all so don't feel like there is it is something that some people strive for some people fall into um, and we have this stigma that only squires can announce that they want to be a peer and that's just not true so Wanting to be a pelican or wanting to be a laurel, there is no shame in that. The laurels show it a little bit more because they enter Kingdom ANS or they enter Baronial Championships. But a pelican is a little bit different where we have to put ourselves out there to be seen. And again, there's no shame in wanting 
to be to be a pelican so don't feel like there is and if anyone ever wants to talk about it please come find me i'll be glad to sit down and and spend some time with you thank you great thanks uh grania did you have something I did. Um, I kind of, since we kind of swerved over into a lane about belts or badges or regalia. Um, hi, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to say something about my belt. Um, I actually have a belt and a necklace because uh, my mistress does lamp work beads. Um, and it's beautiful. I love it. But I don't wear either of those to show somebody else I'm a protege. I wear my belt or I wear my necklace to remind myself of the oath I took to my pelicans. And because um, we did a whole ceremony and they let me essentially write my oath. So I have dug into my oath and I know exactly what my oath means and I know what I'm promising. And so my belt and my necklace are reminders of me every second that I have them on that I have said, I want to learn this. I want to grow in this direction. I don't care if you guys ever see my belt or my necklace. They're reminders for me. And in that way, for me, they are very important. But they're not for anybody else. They're for me and my master and my mistress. Yeah, I agree with that. I can see that. I think I feel similar, similarly, if I could talk about that. <laughs> um, Adam? One of the things my pelican did for me is to make me do a pelican hunt, especially when I go to wars. Uh, when I went to Penzik, was it last year? Maybe last year. She wanted me to do a, a pelican hunt because there's people from all around the world there and she didn't tell me what to ask or anything like that. But one of the things I asked was what do you look in when you go and approach someone to be a protege? And the most, most of them, actually every single one of them said is the service oriented person that is dedicated to being the best they can be. So sometimes it's hard to say that, hey, I'm doing the best I can do and all that. But uh, I hate to leave everybody right now. Uh, I have to finish up my Civil Air Patrol meeting. I'm the commander here, so. Oh, you're fine. I'm glad you, you were able to join us. <laughs> nice. Thank you for your contribution, Adam. Take care, man. It's good talking with you. And you'll have a wonderful evening. <clears throat> Thanks. You too. Bye. Yeah, it is actually um, 10 after. So I don't know if you guys past. have 10. Yeah, 10 past. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys want to do one more question or do we want to go ahead and sign off and we can schedule another one because I still have several other questions. What do you guys think? I'm good to keep going. Okay. Sounds good. We'll do one more. How's that sound? And then we okay. can table the rest of them for another time. Okay. So let's, let's dive into, uh, <laughs> this one might be kind of, uh, I don't know, controversial maybe. I don't know. Have you mm -hmm. had conflict with your pelican? And if so, how did you resolve it? Or vice versa, have you had conflict with your protege and how did you resolve it? So actually, uh, if nobody minds, I'm going to take this one, um, or at least start this one off. I remember Mafamwe was still sitting as landed for Bryn Gwilad. And I'm not going to go into specifics, but we were, we were out doing something and she, she brought up some baronial business and I was head of entourage for them, for her and Pug. And I still, to this day, I remember the moment I was kind of like, okay, I need to talk to my friend Robin right now, not Mistress Mafanway or Her Excellency Mafanway. And she's like, uh, okay. And I'm like, okay, so I have a serious issue and here's why. And I mean, it was a very, I don't necessarily want to say heated conversation, but it was very, a, definitely a very passionate conversation, at least on my part. To which Robin, in all of her grace, is like, you know, those are completely valid points. Here's what you don't know. 
oh, well, when you put it that way. <laughs> so for me, me being me, I approach it head, head first. This is kind of like, I have a problem. Here's my problem. Here's how I see the game. You're messing with my game. I need you to talk to it. And that's, for me, I have found the swiftest way to deal with conflict to keep it from festering. Yep. I agree. I always go straight to Vanessa. I'm like, hey, here's, and then she calms me down. <laughs> Fun way. To kind of go with Dina, I think she's absolutely correct. If you don't have a relationship with your peer that you can't go directly to them and say, blah, or with your student, and you can't go directly to them and say, blah, then you're, you're, you need to consider your relationship. Um, it, it, it definitely is a sign that I have not always watched. And um, I'm glad that Dina and I have created a relationship that we have that. And I feel that her and my relationship is very strong. And admittedly, we are beyond just Pelican protege friends. I mean, more than that. And I think that being able to be honest and straightforward with your Pelican or with your student. I did that with my Pelican. I would go to him and say, Carl, blah, 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 blah. and you go, okay, but, <laughs> and I'm glad that Dina feels comfortable with that. I'm glad that my previous Pel uh, protege Isabella was comfortable with that. Um, those things are important. Absolutely. Definitely. Val? Alden and I, we've gone round and round on telephone conversations and he's like, okay, calm down breathe, breathe. Are you done? But he gives the best advice. And I think we were doing this way before we were student and Pelican for years and years. And um, I think that was probably the one thing that made it such a great relationship that we have is that I can come to him or he'll be like, let's go have lunch. Now I need to talk to you about something or there's this office you should really try out. <laughs> But it's, it's what you, it, any advice to uh, new producers is make sure you have somebody you mesh with. If you don't mesh, then you don't want to have, you don't want to be beating up against somebody. You want to make sure that it's kind of in a weird way, a strange friendship marriage kind of thing that you have with this person it, where you can have these deep conversations and you can tell them anything. And They'll either look at you and shake their head and go, no, or they'll will, uh, advise you in the right direction. Yep, definitely. Anybody else? Marguerite, raise your hand. Oh, sorry, Marguerite. Go ahead. Not and a problem. Um, I want to speak on to that because a lot of people want to jump into a relationship to get that belt so quickly they don't take the time to learn about that person or they think that they have to take a peer that lives close to them and they just rush it so much a a relationship a student peer relationship to me is almost like family it's not something that I am going to make a quick decision on sometimes it's taken me three years before I've been able to get to that point with that I'm comfortable with the person enough that we can have those honest conversations and if I wanted to give any advice to any any person looking at becoming a peer is don't rush the relationship because if you cannot have those dis the those difficult discussions, then it is not going to be healthy for either one of you. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Gavin? I, being someone who has been both uh, protege and now not, I can tell you not having a belt has its downsides. I, I don't have that sounding board or that advocate in the circle that I can go to and talk to and, and then can talk for me so I can get feedback from the circle on what I need to do or what, what uh, uh, your path. my path on what needs to happen. So I'm, I'm missing that connection with um, the path that I've been on for so many years with not having one. But the problem with currently being landed is, and I've had discussions with Pelicans, is I outrank most of the Pelicans unless they are current, current nobility or previous nobility at, at the kingdom level. 
So me taking a belt from a pelican has been more of a concern from some of the pelicans I've spoken to because of the fact that by OP standards, I currently outrank them. Though it is a short-lived ranking, you know, when we step down, that, that goes away. But it, it would be nice to have somebody to speak to and bounce ideas off of that it is currently lacking. And it's been almost four years that, since my pelican released them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tough for sure. Uh, do you have any pelicans that you're just close to that you can talk to without yeah. having that formal relationship? I do. There's a couple of them that I, I use as sounding boards, but it, it's 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 still not the same to have that direct connection and and and, and someone that I can I can focus on. Um, right. I, I I talk to Pandaren occasionally. I, I've been to my funways here on occasion when I've had issues or concerns, both on the service path, but also being previously landed for the barony, if, if there's something that's baronial specific, I can actually bend their ear of like, hey, this is something that's coming up or something that I, I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And being able to have that sounding board is nice as well. Can I Definitely. ask a follow up? Can, can I ask a follow up question to Gavin? Sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, Gavin. So since you are someone who is, uh, well, hold on, let me clarify what I'm hearing. You're actively looking for a pelican? I was, I, Anise was my pelican. She still had a bunch of health issues about four or five years ago and stepped right. away and released all of her pelicans, right. all of her pelicans. I started the path of searching. I talked with Pugna Funway. I've talked to many Several. other pugs, or pelicans, and then we got announced for pelican, or right. for, for landed. Right. So once we were announced for landed, all of them that I spoke to is like, eh, we'll wait. We'll wait until we and, all step down. And you made that choice. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So then my question doesn't apply. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> there was a timing thing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. get that. Uh, Alden? So touching, touching back with kind of what Gavin brought up, um, when I think of a teacher-student relationship, um, whether it is formal or informal, if it's belted or not belted, um, to me that is a relationship that says if, if, if I'm going to become your protege, then I recognize that I am not your peer in that aspect. Um, I still have further to go on my journey, but I would like to foster this relationship with a person who I view as a peer that I can learn from. It doesn't have to be at all about rank. Um, there, there is kind of a mindset in the SCA and it's just our culture that our, our peers and our, our landeds have ranks and stations and, and even our crowns. If, if you're, you know, the king and want to become a, an apprentice, become an apprentice. Um, it, it's about the relationship more than the rank, I think. Uh, so I, I would recommend looking at it that way. Um, or certainly, you know, take a break and, you know, while you're landed, focus on being landed. You're still going to continue your, your SCA career and your service journey, and you can certainly pick that up after your your little detour has, has landed, has ended, and you're back on your service path, which you never really leave because being a landed is absolutely service. Um, but yeah, pick it up then and continue on. Um, I, while I am a pelican and a laurel, I am still a squire. Um, Godwin is my pelican brother, but he is my knight. And on the field and in fighting, I am not his peer. So I, I am more than happy to continue my squire relationship with him. Yep, makes sense. Um, my fun way. Um, I would encourage you, Gavin, to develop that relationship with the person who you might want to become a pelican. I'm sorry, yes. a protege to when you step down, because what. There, I understand what Alden's saying. He's absolutely right that when you're taking that belt, that that is not in that form. However, a lot of people, because you are landed, you have to swear an oath to, a, a fealty to the crown. They feel wrong about having to be in a place to possibly give you advice that isn't in conjunction with the crown. Because you are landed, you have to do these things that the crown have requested, while your peer may not feel that that's the right path. I have regularly seen all of the different paths take back the belt while you were landed or while they were crowned. 
That doesn't mean you can't form that advocacy. It doesn't mean you can't develop that relationship. That's the can go to this about XYZ no matter what. No matter how upset I am, I can go to this person and go <laughs> and they won't take that outside of between that person and I. And that's the person who you want to be a peer with, who you want to be a protege with when you step down, even if they're not willing to take you right now. They may be. That is a that is a personal preference. In our kingdom we seem to not for the most part, but that's a personal preference. But that's still something you can do. If you develop that now, you're there as soon as you step down as Baron. They can put on that yellow belt. You have that representation if you need. Yeah. And and, and following on um, along the same lines, if I do become a, a landed noble, then I, I'm, I've been puzzling. Do I give back my squire's belt to Godwin for the time that I'm landed? Because while... I, well, as a peer, I have not sworn fealty to the crown. I've sworn oaths of service. Um, as a squire, I did swear fealty to Godwin. So if I become landed and have to swear fealty to the crown, I need, I think, to be released from my fealty to Godwin. Even though Godwin's in service to the crown, we can both interpret our fealties to the crown differently. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think were I to become landed, my, my leaning is towards stopping being Godwin Squire, be released from fealty to him so I can do this service as landed. And then once I'm done with landed and released from fealty to the crown, I can swear fealty to Godwin again. That's actually something uh, my Lord Vasily and I have had a conversation about is, you know, if he were to ever like completely lose his mind and decide to fight for crown and actually win, what would happen between with the arrangement that Mfumwe and I have? And I would not feel at all comfortable being in service to Mafanwe while being queen. I couldn't do it. it there, there's just too much there. So I would have to let it go and then pick it up after I step down. Yeah, that makes sense. I became uh, Vanessa's protege before we were landed. So then, you know, she and I talked about it when we became landed. It's like, okay, so you're putting this path on hold. She didn't take the belt back or anything, but it was just the understanding that the path is on hold and uh, you know I was going to completely focus on being landed and then once we were done with that okay now you know I can change my focus back but I was also talking to Laurels about becoming an apprentice at the same time while we were landed and we talked about it and said you know hey we need to wait until you step down to make that a thing since it wasn't before we stepped up so so Here's a question for the Pels. Um, and and in, in this discussion, and be, you've been pre previous landed, I've been told this, well, if you're landed, that puts your service path on hold. I can tell you from being landed, this is one of the most challenging and, and go-getting jobs in the SEA that I've ever had. And I've held multiple kingdom offices. I've um, helped, I've been on the autocrat staff at Gulf Wars many years. This is, it's, it's, you are in the limelight all the time. I can't work behind the scenes while being landed. It is just not allowed. Um, so, and, and I don't understand, and I've heard it from many, many different pals, and even the Crown has told me that this is a great service you're doing, and it's putting your, but it's putting your service path on hold while you're being landed. And I don't, I just, I, I would like an answer to why that mentality is even in place and why it's being said. I know it is service to the barony, but service to the barony is ultimately service to the crown and kingdom. Right. Uh, Mafanwe and then Marguerite. Okay, because I was formerly landed, although I was a Pelican before I became landed, I kind of wanted to talk. This is added. You do get, a, you get an award when you step down. You get your court barony. So that's really why it's, it's not really necessarily that you're placed on hold. But you have to go above and beyond what you're receiving at the end of this, which is that court barony, to make it count, for lack of a better way. So if you took a group that was failing, was low membership, everybody was infighting, and you made this group have twice the number of members, and everybody was able to pull, a pull, pull together to hold multiple really awesome events. And I, Service is above and beyond what gets a court barony. 
Now, that's even more above and beyond than what I would say, but that's what I'm trying to explain. It's that above and beyond. So I consider any office, okay, you held an office, so that's great. What did you do above that? And so that's kind of where, it, with the court barony, it's even more so because you get, you get a pretty hat to wear for the rest of your time in the SCA. Uh, I would also like to speak that we are peers of the society. We aren't peers of a region. We're not peers of a barony. We're not peers of a kingdom. We are peers of the society. And that barony is work. I know it is. And I applaud you for doing it. It's not a job that I really would want. But it is being, you are being recognized for the work with that baronial hat for your barony. Continue doing what you're doing because it does count. But it's a short run where you're looking at a long run. Right. I think that's what people mean when they say you're putting it on hold because the work you're doing now is, you know, for the barony, which like you said, is also for the kingdom roundabout. But, you know, when I stepped down, uh, Vanessa and I talked about it and she's like, you know, I know you did a ton of work for that, but, you know, you just got your court barony for that and it'll be, you know, more work and more time, you know, to do other things and keep being seen, you know, before the other awards come along. So. Yeah. And, and I don't view it as a hold. Um, Pel Pel Pelicans will have different opinions. Um, my opinion is it is not a hold. You are holding an office. Um, yes, you do get a, a pretty hat when you step down and you get a court barony. Um, but again, it's, it's what you do in that office that's above and beyond, like Mufanwe said. Um, and it is also what you continue doing after you step down. Um, are you still, do you, do you show me that you're still dedicated to this path, you know, going forward from there? Um, so it, it's not a hold. Um, you know, kind of a modern analogy in my mind, I guess, is, uh, you know, my best friend went and graduated from the Naval Academy and did 20 years in the Navy or Army and Navy. Um, and then on his retirement, his years at the Academy were counted as active duty years for his retirement. So with 20 years in, he gets 24 out. So to me, that's kind of a weird analogy to having been you know, landed nobility, you get those four years on, on the out side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll still count just in a different way. <laughs> I think is what everybody's saying. Um, does anybody else have anything to add? Okay, well, thank you guys so much for being here. I think we had a lot of great discussions, tackled some uh, more difficult questions this time. Um, and I still have four or five other questions on my list. So we yay, may part three. schedule another one if you guys are up for it. <laughs> hey, I'm up for part three, yay, part three. Yeah. <laughs> considering, <laughs> considering how engaging this conversation has been, do we want to just kind of shift the the overall plan to say this is a semi-regular thing like every two weeks on a Wednesday or whatever? Because this conversation is not going to go away and it's going no. to change. I think yeah. we're yeah. fooling ourselves if we think it's not. <laughs> no, I agree. And I think there are always going to be questions that people have that they want to bring up. And I mean, maybe I think every two weeks might be a little much, but maybe once a month we do once one a of month these. Or yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah. just as a quick shout out, uh, Grania, bringing in Outland's perspective, uh, bringing in other kingdoms would be phenomenal mm -hmm. too, because we are ultimately talking about a society level peerage. It's not just on Stior. Being able to talk to other other kingdoms and getting their perspectives, I think, would put such a bigger light on everything. It would help us look beyond ourselves. Mm -hmm. If I can yeah. get all Buddhist for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> there is definite, definitely a different mindset in the three kingdoms that I have been on, and none of them are the same. And it does make it difficult, especially for those who transition in and out of kingdom mm -hmm. due to jobs, whether that's military or, or mundane. And I can tell you, it was not easy coming into this kingdom after being in other kingdoms. 
um, dealing with the politics, I, I was just totally blown away by the differences. Would it, yeah. Do we know of any active uh, current protégés who are in kingdom but were protégés out of kingdom? Does that make sense? Did I yes, completely promise that question? It okay. Sense, no. Because it would be phenomenal to have them on one of these calls too. That they started protégéing out of kingdom and moved And then in. came into Anstiora. The one I knew of just got Definitely. elevated. <laughs> well, they <laughs> Rhiannon, so <laughs> she does not suck. She's yeah. awesome. I know. <laughs> She's Kat, phenomenal. <laughs> Kat, um, yes, sir. I'm going to play the devil's advocate here just so we're not surprised by this in the future, but the nature of the conversation does lend itself towards possibly airing dirty laundry or frustrations. And that's fine and dandy until some pelican from halfway across the continent hears that without the context of being local. Not saying we shouldn't invite outside the kingdom. I'm 100% behind that. But mm -hmm. we might want to look in, I don't know, rules, preface at the beginning, whatever, just so that there's not an unfortunate or ugly surprise in the middle. Someone says something, it's like, oh, crap, the, the head pelican from another kingdom just heard that. So yeah. I've stepped Makes in a sense. few bear traps in my life. Please don't follow my example. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. That's, that's a good point. It is, it is a, a viable point because I have been asked to go to other kingdoms and speak in circles, and <clears throat> it's a hairy situation. It is very hairy. <laughs> I bet. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate everybody it's being here, difficult. everybody giving all their thoughts and comments, and we will get one scheduled for next month, too. So thank you. Thank <laughs> everybody you. have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.